glass, you eat it with jelly or syrup. I I prefer syrup. Wow. Yeah. That- oh, I we're on. Hey, oh, hey, hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to another hey. episode of the GigaHub Weekly Show, uh, where we talk about <laughs> things that are important to us but may not be important to you. That's true. Indeed. Or in my case, when I was eight, to my mom. <laughs> When I blabbed about <laughs> nerdy things, and she was like, uh-huh, 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 yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I am host one of three, Luis De La Torre. I'm host two of three, Daikaiju Tony. I am host four of three, Adam Crenn. Are we missing a host? Three of three. Are we missing a host? <laughs> the host is... Where's Andy? Andy? <laughs> the host? I like Where's that movie. Andy? Where's Andy? That, that movie's awesome. The host? The, the host. host. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Korean one, right? Uh, yeah. No, I not, not the later crappy one. Oh, I thought no, we were. I Korean thought we were. One. I thought we were talking about Korean the. Good, I thought yeah. we were talking about the young adult novel one. That was fantastic. The Korean one I didn't like. Are you serious? No, <laughs> of course great. not. All right, all right, all right. Um, before we go on any further, guys, let's uh, let's talk about our sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. All right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about graphic novels, so right. we figured we'd well, show you some... comic books and graphic novels are Comic books and graphic novels, yeah. Right. So we figured we would uh, show you guys a couple of the graphic novels that are available here, along with all the other wonderful things that we have right. besides that. There's a lot of pops here. There is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but pops is only a part but, but, of what's But going. if you look around hard enough, you might find some comics around here. <laughs> Like literally behind like each literally one of us, there's comics. Yeah. No pops, just comics. Yeah. Kind of like so that. many pops. <laughs> I'm kidding. We have everything here. Right. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead and start. What do you got? So speaking of amazing graphic novels, here we have, and we're not, I don't think anybody picked this. This is Kingdom Come from DC Comics back in the early 90s, I think, actually. Is it? Early yeah, 90s? I don't pretty, remember exactly what it was, yeah. but... It's this, what I love it. I like it. This is amazing. It is a comic yeah. book that's entirely painted. It's, and it's all paintings, yeah. you guys. And it's Every like, panel. It's kind of like the world after Superman retires and what happens, and it's kind of amazing. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was pretty good, but the fact that ev- I mean, open up, open up a little bit. Let's yeah. let's look at some of the artwork in there. Guys, that's oh. every page of Alex Ross goodness. That's painting, yeah. I've seen videos of this guy just painting mid-90s, on mid-90s. canvas, yeah. and it is amazing. Right. It's amazing. It's all that's a whole comic. Yep. That's the, the whole, whole comic, comic, you guys. Yeah, so amazing. yeah, it's definitely worth it. I believe it was up. originally three or four issues, right? And then now it's a graphic novel. I picked up this the graphic actually, novel. So. Yeah, this actually has a lot of extras in it too, which are really cool, like original sketches and stuff. There you go. It's really cool. Alex Ross is fantastic. 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 What else you got there? I also have the Steve Ditko Omnibus. Ah, uh, Ditko! If you don't know who Steve Ditko is, he was the man that created Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man's He's dad. Not necessarily Stan Lee. Stan I... Lee was there, of course. <laughs> Stan... Stan Lee had his contributions. I, I, but... I attest Stan Lee to being like the sperm donor of many of the superheroes, and like everyone who made them famous was like their, like their better stepdad. Yes and no. I mean... You know, he X Men. Was, he, he wasn't. He wasn't the Bob Kane of Batman. No, no, no. Stan he Lee was. He was better than input. Bob Kane. Yeah, he definitely. But had more I mean, input. he was. He 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 was very into like. I'm gonna right. create this fantastic superhero. Yeah. <laughs> Take over for me, John Byron, or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Steve Ditko actually Steve had it Ditko. plotted out for. Yeah, many, 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 many issues. Here's I mean, my kids, Chris Claremont. Go ahead and raise them. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, Stan Lee was the ultimate uh, bastard. He was the ultimate... Uh, oh, yeah, he was, was definitely your dad that went to go um, get cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> your stepdad. Your Bra- stepdad Robert right? Baratheon. He said <laughs> bastards everywhere. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to read some Steve Ditko goodness pre spot I think some of this might be even after Spider-Man, but mm. here's some right here. And if you don't know who Steve Ditko is or anything about the guy... He was a very interesting guy who continued to do comics up until only a few years ago when he passed away. Yeah. Mm. Even though a lot of his newer stuff is unheard of, it doesn't matter. He just he wa- for him it was all about the work. It wasn't about yeah. the final product. So anyway, I have a signed Steve, Steve Ditko comic. <laughs> for anyone who gets there goes that a reference, joke. Yeah, there's a joke. if not, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Right, right. Um, who wants? I'll you want to go? You want me it. to go? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Speaking of Sp- Speeder- John Speederman, Spooderman. here's Spooderman. this omnibus of the nice. main Spider-Man by David Michelin and Todd, Todd McFarlane. Oh, Big Tad, Big yeah. Todd, Big that, Todd Mick. That is oh, the, the story run right where here. Venom appears, right? Yeah, 300s here. The issue where Spider-Man punches Hulk in the guts here. Nice. Yeah, Spider-Man versus Tri-Sentinel. Nice. A lot, a lot of good stuff. Yep. 
Yep, yep. What you got? Uh, I got a few guys. If you're like me, you like lording the fact that you have been reading comics for a long time over a lot of lay people because screw them. <laughs> Ooh, I was doing fun things like partying. Like, yeah, well, did you read Bronze Age Spawn <laughs> or Bronze Age uh, Swamp Thing? Whoa. Bronze Age Spawn. Oh my god. Kind of. You kind know of, what? I was thinking spawny. Todd McFarlane. Kind of Spanish. I was thinking Todd McFarlane. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Bernie, Bernie Bronze Ransom. Age Swamp Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson, yeah. Uh, how about Grant Morrison's run on The Doom Patrol? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Ooh, good. Which is so more good. what the show's based off of. Yeah, which is fantastic. So I love yeah. the show. Uh, what about old Fantastic Four comics? Hell we can okay. catch up with the Epics Collection. This I, is volume seven. I just picked that up the other day. There are seven volumes of this. Um, now, yeah. Yeah, so you can cat you won't well, catch up. You can actually read about what the actual Fantastic Four were like back in the day. Hell yeah! And then, like I said, lord it over people who were probably doing more fun and social things when you were <laughs> sitting at home, not right. invited to anything. Right. <laughs> Just reading comics. Just, Just reading comics. <laughs> Just reading comics. All right. Oh, you kissed a girl. Cool. I saw Hulk fight the thing. <laughs> Thought yeah. that was amazing. Um, anyways. <laughs> So we have um, we have all this, and of course we have like T-shirts and lanyards and action figures and G Fuel. Uh, we have G Fuel now, guys. We <laughs> carry in to, stock, which is hard G to find. Ooh, yeah. Is it the new Outlaw Energy? Yeah, much better. <laughs> um, posters. We have all kinds of things here, right. guys. So yep. come on down. Uh, buy back issues. Back issues. Buy whatever your little heart desires. Take it home and enjoy it. That's right. Only here at Cosmic Comics. That's right. Uh, this place is great. Yeah, it is. I love coming here. I really do. And I'm sure Tony loves working here. He really does. Yeah. Speaking of comics. And he loves dealing with people, for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for so sure. Come in the store and be annoying. Tony loves it. <laughs> so speaking of comics. <laughs> what's sorry, the, I'm sorry. What's the subject today? Comics. Comics, Tony. Yeah. Hey. Our, particularly our favorite. Hey, hey, hey. yeah. Hey. Hey, hey. Some of our favorites, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of mine have more sentimental value. Yeah. A lot of mine are more like nostalgic. But yeah, yeah th- basically, we want to run down a couple of our favorite comics, right? In the hopes that maybe you'll go out and read them, or pick, yeah, pick or them pick them up. up. Yeah. yeah. All right. um, who would like to start? Uh, I can. You want to start? So yeah, Tony, we, go we for go it. Big Monster Antonio, you got it. We go with top three, and then we just round table. It well, we'll two. do one eight. We'll do one one one. And yeah. just go around. circle around, sure. Yeah, circle yeah. Around. Okay, so my number three, number three, Kick Ass. Yeah, the first, the first, yes, run of like, Kick Ass. The, the Mar- first run, yeah. It's the only Mark Miller comic I really like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> read it at an age where I really shouldn't be reading that stuff. But at the same time, it was <laughs> it like, is yeah. ultra violent. Oh yeah, yeah. it's it was, not. It is gratuitous for gratuitous sake. It was sake. gratuitous yeah. and immat- intentionally so. Yeah. yeah, it was gratuitous and immature enough for me to enjoy it a lot. Right. <laughs> like even though it's meant for adults, it's like something that. Uh, Immature. I'm gonna have to speak d- to your father. Dumbass <laughs> like me could enjoy a lot. Yeah. We have to tell your dad now, Anthony. Yeah. This I hope. Th- I hope this is what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta tell your dad now. I, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, it's probably my favorite take on what if superheroes was real. Yeah, uh, that's ever. good point. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And like. I think that's the reason why I liked Invincible so much. Well, but yeah. no, the difference between the movie and the comic with Kick-Ass is the movie shows... The movie how, I didn't care for. But the movie, yeah. it, it explains like the comic was how, the first run. how horrible it would be to be a superhero. Right. The comic, on the other hand, other hand, would show like how dangerous it would be to like not have a distinction from fantasy and reality. Right, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the trouble you could get in. From <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's good, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I nice. also enjoyed that first run. The first run, a, yeah. A lot, yeah. The second run, not so much. But the first one was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it's something that should have stayed there. <laughs> In the first run? Yeah. There's a lot of things. That <laughs> I, should, I think it would be legendary if there it just stayed there. So many books and movies that just need to stop after the first one, right. but don't. But don't. Yes. Um, and this, is, this was one of the things that should have stopped at at the first one and then that's it. But All right. So who wants to go next? I'll go next. Mine are not in any order because I can't pick an order. I mm. actually love them all for, you know, lack of a better term. Let me bring up my notes real quick. Sorry, I should have been a little more prepared. Oh, I searched something else so I got rid of my page. Um, <gasps> oh my gosh. What were you? Oh my God. What are you looking at? Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> oh, my. oh no. Oh my. Oh, oh anyway. Oh my. Your Google oh. search history. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's a personal favorite of mine. It was the Rom Space Knight 
run, the entire original comic book run from Marvel Comics in the 70s. It's 1979 to 1986. It began as a toy tie-in, believe it or not, for a very crappy toy. Um, the comic book far outlived the toy. Like GoBots. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, GoBots are pretty amazing. Um, yeah. The, the this toys not the, <laughs> show the, so much. I think the thing that appealed to me about Rom Space Knight is, you know, comic books at the time were getting darker and grittier, mm. but I think Rom was just slightly ahead of that curve. Like it was a very tragic story. Mm. Um, there was a lot of death right from the get go. His yeah. fellow Space Knights and humans. Um, he was fighting an alien race that had, he felt responsible. He had. Long story short, Space Knights were defending their planet Galador against these. They were called dire wraiths, these shape-changing aliens mm. that were very aggressive. Um, and when they kind of set out to kind of wipe them out, I guess, genocide, um, the dire wraiths tricked them, and then they, like, escaped to just all over the universe. So mm. Rom kind of felt responsible, like, oh, crap, now they're everywhere. So he kind of felt responsible, and he tracked them to Earth, and just a lot of people die, <laughs> and, and and it's pretty dark and tragic, and there's a lot of ups and downs. And, it um, it it's it sounds like it's set to be like a movie of some kind. Yeah, and in 1979, like mm. I said, it was even though comics were definitely getting darker, more mm. and more progressive at the time, and definitely for older people. I mean, I think Rom was just slightly ahead of that curve. Yeah, and because it's it's a lot of the. I mean, I I was reading Rom before. Like Frank Miller did his Wolverine, which was definitely darker and things like that, you yeah. know. And then, of course, the Dark Knight Returns, um, and it, it's just a great forgotten story. And unfortunately, one of the biggest reasons it's forgotten is because it's a toy tie-in. Marvel does not actually own the rights, ah. <laughs> oh, okay. so that's why that's there's why there's I never been you. any reprints. Uh, oh. um, even though he appears in other Marvel comics. You know, in the background, and sometimes do they call him Rom? Or oh yeah, no, they can still call him Rom. Just not you can't. I don't think they can reprint his own comic. Oh, I see. That's the problem. Um, Because anyway, the um, IDW a few years ago got the rights, I guess, and they they tried to recreate Rom, but of course they didn't have the rights to Dire Rates because Marvel owns the rights to the Dire Rates. It was not good. Mm. It was it was just not. I could see this being (laughs) a phase. Five Marvel movie, right? Where Rom is played by Pete Davidson. <laughs> oh God! Of course, his do that of course me? his face is in it because they paid for his face, right. so it's got to be in it. Yeah. And he transforms into Rom's face. <laughs> but anyway, I, I really, I it's a it's a personal favorite, and I know, like my boss gives me crap because like, oh yeah, you can pick up Rom's and not worth anything, and and that's somewhat true because there's yeah. no interest but in hey, it because you know nobody what? has a right you know what and you know what it is worth something to you to me. and that that's is what correct. is most important um, and if you're if you're looking for something especially from like mm. the 70s and 80s you can get into and probably pick up every issue for relatively cheap I, you know rom's a good place too because here's the thing eventually somebody's going to get those rights locked down yeah. whether it's marvel or somebody else yeah. and then you're going to see the men reprint and then suddenly he'll have a movie or something because, you know, Hollywood has no ideas. They have to steal from everybody else. Yes. Right. And Bill Mantlo really created the comic book, and Sal Buscema did the art, and it's just great stuff. Good, tragic story that, you know, actually, it has, I guess... It has? It does have a happy, I guess, a happy resolution, but, mm. you know, there's a lot of death along the way. <laughs> right. It, you know, there's a lot of tragedy along the way. So. Right. Anyway, that's my that's my first pick. Nice. What, what do you got? Uh, I'm gonna start. I, I think I'm gonna start with uh, one that you guys gave me crap for. <laughs> we and did. That's, uh, <laughs> and that's Watchmen. Because um, we're like, that's I, too easy. Listen, I understand that the that the answer Watchmen is one of my favorite graphic novels yeah. is the equivalent of like, what's your favorite film? Oh, Seven Samurai. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, no, duh. It's but, a classic. But like Seven Samurai. Like Seven Samurai. When you it is, read it, you yeah, realize how good it is. It is exa- yeah. It is worth exactly. It, it, it is. It is it worth really it. Is. Yeah. Um, so I read it a couple of years before the movie came out. Yeah. And it it kind of blew my mind because this was like this was an it's older a this was it's a deconstruction of superheroes, of superheroes yeah. in like late 80s early 90s yeah. like there wasn't even like this was before superheroes were going like extreme with an x yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, before yeah. they were started becoming like more hyper violent and yeah. you know what i mean there was that whole era where it's like ooh, where are we going with superheroes we're going darker and grittier yeah. um before that there was this book 
and the story kind of blew my mind. And I, I shared this yeah. with everybody who I could. Like, dude, do you have to read Watchmen? I will lend you my copy of Watchmen. Right. Yeah. When the movie was coming out, I was lending <laughs> it to everyone I knew. Like, do you know that Watchmen movie's coming out? You have to read the book. You have right. to read the book. I feel bad now. Because uh, because the movie was was okay. It's not terrible. I think the movie missed the point. It missed the point of the, the comic. End. Yeah, the end. Yeah, he just fumbled the end. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like running a ninety nine yard kickoff return only to fumble at the I one. I feel yard like line. Zack Snyder yeah. read it but didn't, didn't get, get the it. End. Yeah, didn't, he didn't get, get it. it. And yeah. he's like, "Why is there dumb octopus? Why is there a giant octopus like, monster? I'm gonna make it real, <laughs> low fi and <laughs> like low fi. Was it low fi? <laughs> like in terms of the movie's runtime, I could get why he would want to cut the giant octopus. But at the same time, you could like easily fix the yeah. ending, like by not having Doctor Manhattan destroy. I don't know, not yeah, uh, not having Osmond Deus destroy multiple parts of the world instead of just destroy New York. That's all you had to yeah. do. You know, yeah. That, yeah. It was not. It just fumbled the. Air. Now I know. <laughs> fumbled at the one yard. Line. There's a four hour cut of that. It's, Hashtag it's, release the Snyder cut of Watchmen. It's good and very. Yeah, I, it's it's very much follows right. the graphic novel. I actually have it. I know. I like, know he that does they, still fumble the end. It's I, the end is no, no. The end is saying, just yeah. the end is just the end. But I know they they didn't they add in like the the Black Freighter stuff like they in the did, comic. They did add in because the there Black was Freighter an animated stuff. Black Freighter movie. They yeah, yeah, and he it's it's mixed back in right. and they added. They do have Under the Hood, but it's not part of the movie. It's right. like a separate short, I, which I, was mixed in with the... Well, it was mixed in, but it was readable. It was like text. It wasn't... That was one of the subtle things that I loved about that book was like, in a world of superheroes, as a comic book fan, what do you read? Yeah. You read pirate comic books. Right. You read cowboy comic yeah, right. books yeah. because there's superheroes are superheroes everywhere. Are they're everywhere. so yeah. ho hum now. Yeah. Like I'm just gonna read a pirate comic because there's no pirates anymore. Yeah. You know. So, but it's one of it's little things like that that really yeah. made me appreciate this book. Um, it is a fantastic book if you haven't read it yet. I think you can find them pretty much. I saw it at a Target. Oh yeah, that graphic novels. Everywhere. Yeah, you can pick we it have up. Them here. Yeah, yeah them here. totally worth it though. It's totally one of worth those your books time that's to not going to go out of print. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. But totally worth your time to well, read. Think, it, even though Alan Moore is crazy, I think yes. one of the <laughs> I, I, and I think he's a genius. Actually, he is a wizard. He's a crazy I make, genius. I he's make crazy. no distinction between the two. <laughs> it's the same. It's, all <laughs> it's the, same. the same thing. He's a madman. Um, he's a madman, but he's a genius. Um, but a madman, you want to kiss on the lips. If I remember correctly, though, DC will never let it go out of print because if it does go out of print, he gets the rights back. Oh, and he and he is. Not happy about them having oh, yeah. the rise. Right, he was right. not happy He's about not the happy, movie, yeah. and I could see why, kind of. I well, because they cha- he changed the end. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. fumbled the end. Anyway, um, yeah, Watchmen. It Pick does up. have my favorite, probably one of my favorite panels or or combination of panels from any comic book, which is uh, when you have the horribly twisted superhero, the comedian, and Night Owl trying to quell riotous civilians. Yeah. And he's like, "What's ha- what's happening? Whatever happened to the American dream?" And he goes, "You're living it, buddy boy. This is it." And I was just like, this, at, and, and this, when all the everything comes together on that panel, and you're just like, "Whoa!" That which is a wow. that panel is probably more relevant Powerful. now yeah. than oh, yeah. it was back then. Yeah, like, yep. it's insane. Or at least as much, yeah. It's it's the, there's something to be said about books that stand the test of yeah. time that way, where you're just like, "Wow, this was written when?" Yeah, this is much more significant now than it probably was back then. Right. Um, so yeah, I, that's why it's my it's one of my picks. It's one of my favorites. All right, Tony, what you got? All right, second pick, uh, Invincible. I'm not gonna yeah. go too deep into this because I already we did do it. a whole episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We discussed it a lot in the show. Invincible, so, yeah. But yeah, basically, it's like the Marvel and DC universe, except characters are allowed to develop and get killed off for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I actually never initially got into the comic book. I'll admit it. It's not for lack of trying it, but I've heard repeatedly that people who love Invincible say, "Yeah, it takes a good eleven issues before I, stuff gets going." You know going. what? I don't mind that. I feel like they've built about as much lore as Marvel and DC yeah. have in a in a very short amount of time, a very short run, yeah, at least comparative fair. to anything Marvel and DC have done. Yeah, like they've built a whole entire world in. A couple of issues, or yeah. like a couple of, of the of show definitely gets you novels. into it a lot quicker. Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah, but, right. uh, that's it. It's good, yeah, dude. We keep it really brief. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, that's cool. Uh, I'm next. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what is next? I don't remember. No. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man. Issue, I don't remember issue. I uh-huh. can remember the issues now. Issue. T- 230 and 231, I believe, mm-hmm. which is the Juggernaut. Oh, is that? Ooh. That's the one where he does his taxes. 
<laughs> yes, against a guy named the Juggernaut. No. No, the guy named the Juggernaut is the IRS guy who's like, uh, where are your taxes at, yeah, it's Peter issue, Parker? It's Amazing Spider-Man issue 230 and 231 where he actually tangles with the Juggernaut. Mm. Um, Class, which is classic. It's, it's probably one of my favorite. It's a two-issue arc, and Juggernaut has been sent to... I'm not going to get too much into the backstory, but he's been basically sent to take out Madam Widow, who's kind of a psychic spider mm-hmm. lady, yeah. mm-hmm. basically. Which was yeah. the Spider-Verse. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, it's just Spider-Man against the Juggernaut. Like, let that sink in a little bit. And yeah. it's just, you know, as powerful as Spider-Man is, the Juggernaut, he, he just, the, he he's just the Juggernaut. Does, he doesn't have the strength to fight the Juggernaut. And right. it's just the way it plays out is so amazing. And how he ultimately takes a Juggernaut out is friggin' amazing. I love like how he just, says it. It's just a great two-story arc. I love like, in the book he says his catchphrase, "I'm the Juggernaut." No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> say that. That's not. I don't think he ever says he that. Never except says in that, that stupid, stupid movie. movie yeah. yeah. Even though I like that guy, in the, but anyway, it's just it's just great. It's just it's you get to see a very raw Peter Parker fighting someone and something that is that doesn't want to fight him but won't stop which is ultimately juggernaut's power he's not fighting him he's just like uh, yeah i need to get here and you're in my way right and you get to see peter really stretch his mental muscles about how to take down a villain that is just beyond him yeah and it's just amazing it's great i seem to remember a he picture tries a lot of things it yeah. might be a cover or it might be a splash page right where he's got his helmet hung up on webs is that right do i do i no. have that right that- Am I thinking no. of something else? It's probably something else. Okay. Because right, right, right. he does, he initially tries to tear his helmet off, and Juggernaut, that's where the Juggernaut gem makes is, some right. comment that's like, yeah, I, I welded it onto the suit after after the X-Men tore it off last yeah. time or whatever. Hey, that's a guy who's learned his <laughs> lesson. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> He's like, good try, Say Spidey. what you will yeah. about the Juggernaut. Yeah. That, is, that is a man yeah. who's learned his lesson. Yep. But of course, it's a comic book, and Spidey ultimately prevails. But of it's course. just it's yeah. really it's really cool. It's pretty inventive. <laughs> it's really right. cool, and he actually gets rid of the Juggernaut for quite a period of time. <laughs> Doesn't kill him, of course, because no. he just can't. But because that's not what stuff. heroes do. That's not what heroes do. All yeah. right, what you got? What's your number two? Uh, my number two uh, is a more modern day comic, which is uh, Black Sad. Yeah. I am a huge fan of like noir detective stories. Right. And this is basically if characters from the Jungle Book were in a city, like it, <laughs> like the, yeah, like yeah. The, first off, the artwork, the artwork, the artwork is like Disney times ten. Like that's how beautiful this artwork is. Right, right. It's and then just like imagine like your lead detective. Imagine Bagheera from the Jungle Book is right. like walking around on two legs, solving mysteries, like <laughs> hardcore mysteries. Right. This isn't like a kids book no, either. This is like book. a very mature noir book. Yeah. And that yeah. book has its fans. I it mean, does. It, I mean, it's a great. Isn't it's a, a great game? book. It, they did. They did oh, really? release a video game for it. I. Ew. It didn't <laughs> look great to me, and I, honestly, I didn't see the need for it. I figured yeah. the graphic novels are enough, but there are like three or four graphic novels currently yeah. available. Yeah, um, we have for Black Said. Yeah, uh-huh. guys, and they, and they sell, and we get them back in stock. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's all. There, <laughs> Like there are like neo Nazis in it, and they're oh. all played by white animals, polar bears, oh white God. dogs, that <laughs> kind of stuff. That's like it's funny. amazing. Yeah. And and That's John awesome. Blacksad, who is a a, a, a panther or a, a black He's like cat, a panther, yeah. yeah, he is. Like there is like they're all different species, but there are races in this. So yeah. like there is racism in this. This oh, is like this is like old school New York. <laughs> wow. Like it's really good. It's very good. I know very you've been good. telling me for years to read it. I've you never should. Read it. I will let you borrow <laughs> my copies of Black Side. It's really good. Right. Um but yeah, I, I absolutely love it. So yeah, yeah, dude, check that out if you get a chance. All right, hey, Tony. So Last one, Tony. What's your number one? Spider Man Blue. Number one guy. So Spider-Man I did read Spider Man Blue, yeah. Spider Man, Mar- favorite Marvel card all the time. But Spider-Man Blue is more of a love story than an action-adventure story. Yeah. And it's m- mainly about the life of Peter Parker post-high school, college years. Yeah. And the thing that a lot of Spider-Man writers forget about nowadays is that Peter and MJ's relationship is a result of them coping with the tragedy of Correct. Gwen yeah. Stacy. Yeah, Gwen Stacy's which is death, yeah. M- reason why Spider-Man life st- – I mean, not life story. Spider-Man Blue is still, like – up there in terms of one of the best Spider-Man stories ever. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and that's Tim Sale and... And Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb, yeah. Yes. Is that all you wanted to say about it? That's it? I mean, 
I also recommend Daredevil Yellow, Hulk Gray. All those Ooh, right. uh, Daredevil all the Yellow, Jeff I Lowe, really enjoyed Daredevil yeah, Yellow. All, all, all those are my favorites. Yeah. It's, sale stuff, it's yeah. just that Spider-Man life story like hits in a different level just because of the Gwen Stacy story. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. A lot of people do forget it. Yeah, everybody's focused on the whole MJ thing, and it's like, which is really more of a byproduct of the ultimate storyline, not the original Amazing Spider-Man. Right. Yeah. Gwen Stacy was his first love, and mm-hmm. you know. Anyway, she gone. So now we're on to my yeah. favorite comic Your of all time. Your absolute favorite comic. Wow, is this okay? I didn't know we were ranking them. This is my favorite individual comic, one issue, one and done issue of all time. Okay. Um, it'll have it has some connections that you'll appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is Marvel Two and One Annual Number Seven. Number Seven. Number Seven. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Mm. Greatest comic book of all time. Come wow. On. Come on, guys. Wow. The greatest comic book of Marvel all time. Marvel 2 and 1 primarily starred the ever loving blue eyed thing. And in, oh, okay. In this yeah. issue. Mm-hmm. And then, and then it, ah, in this issue, he fights the champion. Mm. Um, yep. The champion is a very large blue guy who mm. basically comes to Earth for the sake of the spirit of competition and basically says. Your planet, in order to be judged worthy, has to provide me adequate sport. And if you cannot, I will wipe out I your will planet. destroy it, yeah. Right. And, of course, the Hulk just rages, and he goes, oh, I'm not going to fight a mindless brute. Gets rid of the Hulk. You know, um, he fights a few different guys and different varying degrees of success. He knocks a lot of them out. Turner and, D. Sentry um, was there. Yeah, probably. And then, you know, I think <laughs> Thor tried to fight him, and Thor used his hammer, and he's like, this is about competition, not about using weapons. Get out of here, you know, um. stuff like that. Because, you know, Ben Grimm isn't the strongest. Sure, I mean, yeah. they're clearly more powerful characters. He's one of the strongest, but of Ben but Grimm. But I don't think that, that's, ben but that's Grimm, not the appeal of Ben Grimm, yeah. though. Ben Grimm is kind of like Goten. Where like uh, he's from he, Dragon Ball, he, Z. yeah, he's definitely like one of the Saiyans, but he's like the weakest one. Sure. That would be Ben Grimm. He is yeah. like top tier superhero, but he's like the bottom of the top tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but that's not why Ben Grimm's great. And this issue is why Ben Grimm is great because you know the champion keeps knocking him down, and Ben keeps getting up. Yeah, and ultimately that's what saves the Earth because he won't be defeated. Um, so this was famously. I don't even say par- it was homaged in um, an episode of Dexter's Lab, mm, which was yeah. Justice League. Yeah, yeah. And the champion was played by none other Ooh, than Macho yeah. Man. Oh, Macho oh, Man. Macho Man Randy yeah, Savage. I yeah. This. yeah, yeah. And it was Monkey. Was the the Monkey was the Ben Grimm right, character? Right. Yeah. And it's just a great friggin' story. It's just one shot. It's silly, but at the same time, it's really good and touching and heartfelt. And by, by the way, you badass. could not have picked anyone better to play that character oh, yeah. than the Macho Man oh, yeah. Randy Savage, because one of my person, one of my personal heroes. Right. And the champion right. was ridiculously <laughs> arrogant and yeah, just like you know. Just amazing. This little creature has shown me that you are worthy of yeah, existing says, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Though I can break your body and smash your bones. I can cannot never... break your spirit. Right, right. And that's basically what the champion says <laughs> right. to Ben Grimm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that's what that's what the appeal of Ben Grimm always right. was, was he he was this fantastical, gigantic sort of creature. Rock thing. Rock yeah. thing but like at his core, yeah. he was a man who was who was ultimately suffering? I mean, like yeah. he was. He was. While anyone was would revel, character. yeah. While anyone would revel in having superpowers, like these superpowers were more of a hindrance to him. Yeah. You know, so like seeing him sort of be like he's so sad about having this, like looking like this. I think yeah. is the big thing is walking around as a big rock creature. But it also needed to happen to uh, him. If who, you know. like Raphael, could just disguise it with a hat and a trench coat. <laughs> Right, right. Well, Ben did a few times. Yeah, too. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he ultimately what made him so great is like he was he had no he quit. Was, no, no quit in him. Yeah, he was an everyman, but yeah. like he didn't let this tragic thing or this thing that he has is seeing as tragic yeah. hold him back or hold him down from doing the right thing. He right. he's. The, the though, whole, he the whole, didn't, he the, didn't start off as a heroic character. No, no, he's not at all. crappy. Yeah, 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 no, of course he, he was. was. always trying to steal Sue away he's from like an alpha Reed. male. Yeah, he's an yeah. alpha male douche. Yeah. Even though Reed was his friend, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think he picked up the, the power and responsibility lesson a lot faster than Peter Parker did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. he did have his moments of tragedy, but he always knew what was right. Exactly. Yes. And he never quit. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, to where, where Spider Man had to learn that the hard way, the very hard way, the which, very hard way, which makes sense where it started. But anyway, that's a different story. Yeah, no, that's a, but but All I right. think that's the I think that's the appeal. I think that's why you you love characters like 
Right. Like Ben Grimm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last one. Is, last one is a is a more of a nostalgic pick, um, and that's Jeff Smith's comic Bone. Oh yeah. Um, I you read that in read middle school. And all ages too. Yeah. All, all yeah, ages. it is an all ages book. So yeah, if you can come down to the store, I think we have it here. I've seen it. He, the whole series is right yeah, uh, right at the is. front over there. It is. Um, yeah, come pick it up. It's it's totally safe for your kids to read. Right. Um, it's about these little creatures who live. Um, who sort of get lost into a, a real right. like fantasy world, right. and they're just trying to get back home. Right. Um, the artwork is spectacular. I love Jeff Smith's. Uh, I, I love his artwork. I know he did. Uh, it's simple, but yet it has a complexity to it. That yeah, just the little the little belies, creature, the yeah. little bone, and like his his cousins, right? Yeah. Like they're they're very simple little looking characters, right. and then you put them in this world where like Master the hu- cartoonist, yeah. yeah, the humans. He's yeah, he's like Bill Watterson, good. Yeah. Like yeah. he's yeah. Oh, oh, that was God. my honorable mention. By yeah, the way, which we'll get to. Bill yeah. Watterson. Um, He's Bill Watterson good where, yeah, he, it's very simplistic art. And then they get to this this real world and, like, the humans and the dragons and the giant rat creatures are, yeah. like, so detailed and, like, one they just, they look wonderful. I'm, I'm, part of me is happy that this is, this is being turned by Netflix into an animated series. Right. Mm-hmm. But then, you know. Yeah. You never know, you never what, know it's gonna what, be. what it's yeah. going to be. Um, right. But, you know, at least if it's bad, I always have the comic. Right. Um, I remember reading it when I was a kid. I would, whenever my mom would take me to the store. This is back when retailers had comic books. Comic books. books yeah. I would pick up. Other I would book. read Bone, and I would always be like, I would never read them uh, chronologically, Sequentially, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, I would read one issue, and we wouldn't go back to that store for like a month or so. So I was always a, an issue or two behind or something. Right. Um, but I, I remember en- enjoying it immensely. Cool. And again, the artwork is beautiful. And I mean, you've read it. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's really good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and it's, again, it's here. So pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Let's do some quick honorable mentions if you have any, of course. I do want to mention Calvin and Hobbes, which is a comic strip, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's amazing. We <laughs> just said it. Like Bill Waterson. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's amazing. Like man. you look at, like, he takes very simple characters. If you've ever seen the stupid. Things on trucks where it shows a little kid peeing on something. Yes. Yeah. That's Calvin. It's not licensed because Bill Watterson never licensed anything. He, yeah, there, there's he no, there's no it, Hobbs. Yeah. He doesn't stuff, believe in it. Yeah. Stuff toy or anything yeah. like that. He's not like he's not like Charles Schultz. But it is yeah. totally <laughs> worth picking up anything that says Calvin and Hobbs. I mean, reading, like, so. look at the artwork, and it's so simple. And then he does like his imagination stuff where he's Spaceman Spiff or and whatever. It's incredibly and it's detailed, incredibly. Yeah. They yeah. look like old comic serials yeah, yeah. from like way back in the day and detailed he is he is an amazing artist it he's is. an amazing artist yeah, yeah if you can pick up calvin and Hobbes stuff please do so do you have any i don't have any honorable no, mentions no honorable honorable mentions? Mentions? okay what do you got you got any other honorable mentions? i don't say i wasn't even thinking about honorable mentions i wasn't either until you, you started talking about bone i'm like oh i do want to mention calvin and Hobbes. calvin and Hobbes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. calvin and Hobbes is ugh, well, that's okay so if we good. got anything well let's uh let's do some plugs and get out of here okay um, i'd like to plug in toko titan cast it's, uh, it's a podcast owned by, by a friend of mine Cool. That's about it. Nice. You got any? Uh, yeah. Um, so today is Sunday. So next Saturday, I will be appearing at a Capriati's <laughs> uh, right next to the store. <laughs> so if you want to come buy me a sandwich, I'm not going to be doing anything. I'm just going to be hanging out. I'm just going to be eating. Just, just going to be eating out. a Bobby. So, you know, if you want to come buy me some chips or something, because I don't buy chips, it's a ripoff. But if you want to buy me <laughs> chips, that's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a picture with you for whatever that's All worth. Right. All right. Which Saturday it is? Nobody knows. Right. I will also be appearing at Cosmic Comics. Tpublic.com. Right. Just shopping. Oddity Collectibles. Cool t-shirts for your cool Awesome chest. Ob- obscure <laughs> for your cool chest. All right. <laughs> t-shirts for your chest. That should be your slogan for <laughs> Oddity Collectibles T-shirts for, for your, your chest. For your, cover that naked chest. Cover you that you bare great. chest, you right. menace to society. Right. Uh, remember to hit the the bell button and the right. subscribe button, um, and to send us messages um, on the thing. You know the thing. <laughs> the comments. The comments comment section. Comment comments on the comments crappy section. We are, yeah. Yeah. I was I was thinking of a Bobby sandwich. <laughs> And uh, I'm really hungry. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm like out of it. But yeah, uh, leave us a comment in the comments below. And uh, I mean, if that's it, yeah, come on down to Cosmic Comics. All, all right. right. Pick up all the titles we just mentioned. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, that's that's it. it. Right. So yep. we will Good see night, you guys everybody. next week. Good night.